second loom lesson. We're taking a bit of a jump today. We looked at nuclear issues last lesson. Today we are looking at cloning. So this is a biology topic. The reason we've moved to this is because I feel it's one you are capable of doing at home. There'll be a lesson on cloning today and a lesson on adult cell cloning on Monday. Okay, so you have a do now as always. Please pause the video now and complete the do now. Okay, on to the answers. So the flame test for potassium is lilac and the flame test for sodium is yellow. The flame test for sodium is one that's often mistaken. It's one that a lot of mistakes are often made. In order to test for the presence of a sulfate, you react it with barium chloride and dilute hydrochloric acid and it forms a white precipitate. In nuclear fission, you've got that large atomic nuclei. Remember, you just can't say atom, you've got to have the word nuclei in there. It splits into two smaller atomic nuclei, releasing two or more neutrons and energy. This is what happens in nuclear power plants. It uses uranium or plutonium as the radioactive fuel source. Um, why can't we test for multiple ions in one flame test? It's because they will mask each other. What colour does calcium go in sodium hydroxide? It forms that white precipitate. Iron 2 ions form a green uh, precipitate and iron 3 ions form a brown precipitate. So iron 2 forms a green precipitate and iron 3 forms a brown precipitate. You've now got uh, uses or sorry, sources of background radiation that are man-made, that are artificial. These are medical sources such as x-rays. It could also be certain radiotherapy treatments, smoke alarms. Smoke alarms in your house contain an alpha particle. Please pause the video now and think about alpha particles. Challenge yourself to remember everything you can about them. You've also got nuclear waste and nuclear power stations and nuclear weapons. On to eight natural sources of background radiation are radon gas, rocks. Remember places like Cornwall, which contain a lot of granite, have a higher background radiation level. Cosmic rays and food. For example, Brazil nuts are high in radioactivity. Okay, on to today's lesson on cloning. So we're starting here at the basic. You are made up of cells. You're made up of eukaryotic cells because they contain a nucleus. Inside your nucleus are these long linear thread-like structures known as chromosomes. You have 23 pairs of chromosomes. And these chromosomes are made up of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. It has that significant double helical shape made of two strands. And within this Within your chromosomes, the DNA will be kind of uh, batched together in genes. And genes are what make you what you are. They will provide you with your characteristics. I want you to start here just with this basic understanding of molecular biology, because that will lead us into the lesson on cloning today. So what is a clone? I'll put some pictures there to get you thinking about it. I'm going to show you the definition in a moment, though. Off topic, if anyone wants the Mandalorian, pretty good show, to be honest with you. OK, so a clone. There's some key words here. A clone is an individual that has been produced asexually and is genetically identical to the parent. Asexually means made from one parent. It only contains the DNA from one parent. When you, when humans are produced, it's typically sexual and it will contain DNA from both parents. There is a fusion of gametes, so the egg and sperm fuse together. But a clone is typically made asexually. Cloning is massively important. It plays a large role in our agricultural industries. And you might select your clones, clones based on certain characteristics. That could be disease resistance, high milk yield, muscle mass, suitability to a climate. 
Okay, so I put a picture of a watermelon here. And there's a reason for that. So watermelons, you can buy them in seedless varieties. The same with grapes. Seeds are needed for plants to reproduce. So these seedless watermelons, what I'm thinking about is how do they manage to reproduce? The answer to this is cloning. Lee's seed these varieties are cloned using a technique known as cutting. And that is a technique we're going to look at today. So this technique known as cutting, you incubate your plant with rooting hormones and they will go into perfect copies of the parent plant, also known as clones. Another common example of clones that you'll be that you commonly use or eat even are bananas. Many of us love bananas, but bananas are clones. Bananas that we all have all around the country are clones of each other. This does actually cause certain issues. If there was a disease that was uh, dangerous to the banana, it would spread like wildfire through their population because they are all clones of each other. They do not have that genetic variation to protect them about to protect them against changes in their environment. This was a massive issue in the uh, 1900s with a disease known as Dutch elm disease. Dutch elms are a type of tree, they're all very genetically homogenous, they're all very genetically similar. And so when a new disease arrived, it managed to wipe out a large proportion of that society, of that population. So we are going to look at cloning plants now. We're gonna look at two methods of cloning plants, cuttings and tissue culture. So we're gonna first look at cuttings, Okay, here is the method for cuttings. Once I'm done talking, please pause the video and record the method. I've included a picture to help you understand what is going on. So you would cut off part of your stem or part of a branch. You would then dip that in hormone rooting powder. The hormone rooting powder is something known as auxin. Auxin is a plant hormone that you will come across later on in your syllabus. It has a lot of important properties for plants. So you'll dip your cutting into that rooting power, powder, that auxin. You will then place it in some damp compost. It's got to be wet. It's got to be in sunlight because obviously plants need these things to photosynthesize and therefore to grow. Over the next few weeks, that small cutting will grow into an identical copy of that previous plant. This allows you to produce one copy at a time. Now, I've included both here, tissue culture and cuttings. Uh, once I'm done talking, please pause the video and record down the information about tissue culture. So tissue culture is another way of making plant clones. Um, you can use a small group of cells. So you would scrape off a small group of cells from your parent plant. You would then grow them in agar. You've used agar when growing bacteria. It contains a nutrient broth. It contains nutrients. So this one for growing plants will contain nutrients and auxins that rooting hormone powder again. These cells will then develop into tiny, tiny plantlets. These tiny plantlets you can then plant in damp compost and grow many, many new plants from that singular piece of plant tissue. This is, is an advantage of tissue culture as opposed to cuttings, because you can produce many plants from that single clone, from that single parent plant, sorry, whereas in cuttings you're kind of restricting how much you can produce. However, cuttings are very cheap and easy. Anyone can do it in their back garden even. Okay, a large reason why tissue culture is important is it allows us to preserve rare plant species. Okay, I'd like to pause the video now and record the method and any relevant information about tissue culture, culture and cuttings. Thank you. Okay, on to your questions. So there are a range of questions here ending with a challenge one. Uh, five and six involve you describing a method. Three is something outside your realm of knowledge. Okay, it's a bit more of a suggest questions. I just want you to give it a go. The challenge one is an evaluate question. On an evaluate question, I need advantages, I need disadvantages, I need a conclusion. So you're looking at tissue culture and cuttings, advantages and disadvantages of both, because they both have them and then just give me a conclusion on what which ones you think farmers would use. It's your opinion backed up by evidence here. 
Okay, please pause the video now and complete the questions. All right, on to the answers. I think the answers are fairly self-explanatory. I haven't got much more to add to each one, so I'll let you read through them. One thing I will say for question six, you need to look at the image that my face was covering in order to get the answer. For my challenge, I haven't included a conclusion, but you need to make sure you have. As long as it matches what you've been saying, that's completely and utterly fine. An interesting one is uh, that number three, that female whiptail lizards. They're a species of lizard that actually honestly only have females. They reproduce through something known as parthenogenesis. Uh, it means virgin birth, if you were to translate it literally. So what they do, the two female lizards will get together and they will simulate having sex. So they won't actually have sex together, but they will simulate it. And that is kind of the stimulus that one of them needs to then start producing that egg. It's actually a really fascinating thing. If you are interested, please feel free to look into it more. It's the female whiptail lizard and it's known as parthenogenesis or parthenogenesis. OK, moving on, we're going to look at cloning in animals now. We've looked at cloning in plants, the two different methods, tissue culture, cuttings. We looked at methods and advantages and disadvantages of each. We're now going to look into cloning animals. We're going to look at one technique today, and that one is known as embryo cloning or embryo transfer. However, to give us a bit of context, I'd like you to pause your video now and to read through this brief text. OK, moving on. So we're going to look at embryo cloning. My advice would be to let me talk. Once I'm done, record the information, one, two, three and four and the method. But also once you've gone through all two slides, because you're going to be ready for two slides, I've recorded the picture as well afterwards. But I've blown up the picture onto a larger slide so you can see it easier. So this is a really quite long method. and It's a difficult one to learn, but it's very important that we do. So in embryo cloning or embryo transfer, both names are OK, by the way. You start by giving fertility hormones to your selected top quality cow. This could be the cow that produces the most milk, uh, that is best suited to the environment, that is disease resistant. But you will give your fertility hormones. <laughs> Sorry, my cat just fell over. She's trying to catch a fly. Sorry for the disruption. She missed the fly completely. All right, anyway, so you give your top quality cow these fertility hormones. These will be things like LH or FSH. These are hormones that you haven't looked at yet, but you will do in the future. So LH and FSH, they're similar, they are similar hormones as are found in humans. This will cause that top quality cow to make many, many eggs. You then artificially inseminate these eggs with your top quality bull sperm. You then allow these fertilized egg cells to develop into an early embryo. And that's where we join the picture now. At this very early stage of development, these embryo cells are something known as totipotent. Toti really means all and potent. If you're potent, you're able. It means all able. So these cells can differentiate into all the different cells that a body needs. So from this early embryo cell, you'll grow your other cells your fat cells, your muscle cells, your gland cells, your bone cells. All of these cells are produced from this embryo. That's why it's described as totipotent. OK, if you'd like to pause the video now, I'm going to move on to the next stage. OK, on to the second stage. So we're still with the picture now and I'll move my face so you can see it. So your embryo, you then divide it into several individual cells, as shown in the image. You can split it into your several individual cells. These are all going to be genetically identical to that original early embryo. These cells 
are then allowed to develop into embryos. So you leave them in the lab, you grow them in the lab. Once they've reached a certain stage, which I think is, a, is known as the blastocyte, so blastocyst stage, they can then be implanted or transplanted into the surrogate mothers. So these mothers will have no necessary genetic relationship to these embryos, but they'll be used as birth mothers. They are your surrogate mothers. They will then give birth to these identical cloned calves. They will not be biologically related to their mothers, to their host mothers, but they will all be genetically identical to each other and genetically identical to that early embryo made up of that top quality cow and top quality bull. Okay, if you'd like to record the video now and get down any part of this method as well. Okay, here's the larger blown up picture if you want to get that down. I do think it explains it well and it's good to have a pictorial representation as well. I'm not expecting works of art. From those of you who have seen me draw, you know that I'm pretty good at it, but don't expect to be quite as good as me. So please pause the video and get down that picture. Okay, why do we clone? So cloning has some downsides. It is expensive. Thankfully, it's coming a lot cheaper actually due to the technique known as CRISPR. And when we get back to school, that is a technique that I will talk to you about in a lot more detail. But if you are interested in it, please look it up. It's CRISPR, like CRISP, with an R at the end. Um, it does take highly skilled workers. However, a top quality cow through cloning, through this MVO transfer, MVO cloning, can produce up to 30 offspring in a year, as opposed to 8 and 10 in their entire lifetime. So they can produce a lot more offspring. And when you're a farmer who's income is dependent upon getting the best meat, the best milk, it's very worthwhile. It also allows us to tackle problems like food shortages. Okay, a bit more reading for you. This gives us reasons why cloning is important. Please pause the video and read through the text here. Okay, moving on. On some questions again. It was a bit of a repeat question, because it's how you can remember things. For the challenge, you will remember it. I mentioned it when we were going through it. It's not something you've done before, but I've mentioned it on purpose. Number three, I want a really long description. Okay, I know it's going to be laborious, but it's so important that you nail it. Okay, please pause the video and answer the questions. Answers. For question three, it is an incredibly long answer. So what they like to do is to pause the video, go and scroll back to the two slides that showed it on, or just check in your books, but I couldn't fit the whole answer in here. Please tick, cross, check, correct, you know the deal. For the challenge, it's LH and FSH. These are typically gonna be your fertility hormones. LH stands for luteinizing hormones. And FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone. So on to some exam questions. Question one, suggest one advantage of using tissue culture and not using cuttings to produce plants. So I need an advantage of tissue culture against cuttings. Pause the video now, write your answer, and I'll show you the answer in a moment. Okay, on to the answer. There you go. Tissue culture can produce many more offspring. Ignore, it will not allow you to say it's faster or that it costs less. You can't need to talk about the cost here. I want to know about the offspring. Right. Oops. On to the next question. So, busy Lizzie. Busy Lizzie plants produce flowers of many different colours. A gardener wants to produce busy lizzie plants to fill a flower bed in her garden. She decides to grow them from cuttings rather than from seeds. So she is going to use cuttings as opposed to reproducing them sexually from seeds. So give one condition that she should supply to the new cuttings so that they grow well. Easy peasy. On to B. Busy lizzie plants can produce flowers which are white, pink or red. A gardener wants to 
Gorgeous play containing all three colours of flowers. Give one advantage and one disadvantage to the gardener of growing busy lizzie plants from cuttings rather than seeds. It's important to note here that you're comparing cuttings to seeds and you are not comparing cuttings to tissue culture. Okay, I'm going to move on to the answers. If you need to pause the video, please do. So for A, the kind of conditions that they need it needs to be wet. It needs to be a suitable temperature. They need sunlight. They do need also rooting powder. These are all basic things that we know that plants need. So an advantage of using cuttings as opposed to seeds. You can make them exactly the same as the parent. Okay, you make them the same as the parent. So they are going to be the same as that in initial parent. I think that's the most important one. The disadvantage is that they are all the same. What that means is a disease could potentially wipe out all of them because there's no variability. That goes back to when we were talking about that Dutch elm disease. On to another question, I think our last one for today. It's quite a long one. I'd like to pause the video, read through it, and answer the questions. Okay, on to the answers. So the color and shape of the leaves are known as characteristics. The information for leaf color is stored in parts of the chromosome called genes. The new plants are known as clones. The new plants have been produced by asexual reproduction. Give yourself a score out of four. Name one other way of producing plants that are identical to their parents. It says one other way. You've already got one at the top. The technique at the top is known as cutting. So if you've written cutting, you are not correct. You have to read the question. It's name one other way. So the other way is tissue culture. I'll be willing to bet that quite a few of us made that mistake there. And it's fine because now is the time to make it. All right, on to the last one. Name one way of producing animals identical to each other, embryo cloning or embryo transfer. Okay, well done, I'm assuming. Keep up the hard work. On Monday, I'll be sending out another video on adult cell cloning. This is a fascinating area, all of it, and if you are interested, please do look it up more. There's fascinating studies to look at, like, for example, CRISPR. You could look at a website known as Viagen, V I A G E N that put, makes cloned pets for if your pet dies. You can uh, look at a cat known as CC, stands for copycat of carbon copy, which is a genetically modified uh, cloned cat. You could look at uh, Lulu and Nana, which were actually the first humans, supposedly, and there is a bit of controversy on this, to be genetically engineered. It was a study done in China and it has received considerable criticism. Okay, stay safe all of you. Hope you have a lovely day. Thank you for listening. Farewell.